you're, you know, very much involved in the uh, political landscape in Washington, D.C., and obviously the state capitals. It's a very interesting, I, I don't know really how to describe it, Eric. Interesting uh, is a uh, Interesting good situation we find ourselves in almost every day. Can you kind of cap the political landscape? Well, obviously, you know, our union endorsed Hillary Clinton. Um, you know, the, for the folks uh, in our membership who are Republican, they'll go, how could you possibly do that or whatever? We poll our members, mm -hmm. and we came at about, a, we're at about a 60-40 Democrat to, uh, Republican membership. And the last election, uh, still a majority of our members voted for Hillary Clinton. But I wrote an article, and I said, we got to put that on a shelf. We endorsed a candidate. They didn't win. And I'm the president of an organization that represents workers. And the people of this country spoke, people of Canada spoke, and they elected leaders, diametrically different in their thought process. My job is to guide the union through the political landscape, regardless of who the people put in power. Mm -hmm. That the union's gonna be ongoing, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna call balls and strikes. President Trumpka from the AFL talked about that. And what that means really is if we see and uh, issues that affect our industry and our union, we are gonna wholeheartedly support no matter who uh, broaches the idea. Mm -hmm. And if we see things that we're morally opposed to, we are going to stand up and speak out. Mm -hmm. So the issue is, is the country obviously wanted change. They put a change agent in, in President Trump, but he limits his experience in government. You know, I am going to switch off the Donald Trump effectiveness model and tell you that Congress needs to do its job. And so our union politically has decided we're going to focus at the state levels and we're going to work because that's where our local unions and district councils are affected. We are developing outreach in Canada and we're working provincially to find out where we can be involved and how we can help the local unions. So we recently went up to Ottawa and we're broadening our outreach and assistance to the local unions and the district councils, both financially and uh, politically. And on the federal level, we're advocating for transportation infrastructure both in the United States and Canada. Mm -hmm. We want energy uh, investment in both the United States and Canada. And we believe our members and then our contractors benefit by those government investments. And it's too hard to forecast or prognosticate. It's easy to throw pot shots and, and pick on them. You know, it, it, he's not somebody I voted for, but I, I respect his office and president. He makes he makes it interesting every day. Every day. But, so you put him aside. There's still a Secretary of Labor. This international's met with the Secretary of Labor. This international is uh, about ready to meet with the Secretary of Energy because those are the things that impact our members. And regardless who's in power, those are the shops that govern, you know, the rules regulating labor unions that stick up for workers right. and where we get our safety um, uh, ideas f uh, from and foster, but we're not just giving up because politically we're on uh, in disagreement with one candidate or another. And I can caution you as the conservative type governments, you know, some people rail against. There are certain things that we morally disagree with, but there are some things that we strongly agree with. Yeah. Up in Canada, uh, Trudeau has been great for labor but the leftists are so environmentally restrictive that they're starting to tamp down most of the energy-related right. jobs in Canada, and it's affecting our contractors and our members. So there's a balance. And as the president of a union, I can't impose my personal political beliefs, yeah. and I'm not going to. Right. Um, but no matter who is the president or premier in Canada, my job is to take and... Um, and steer the union and work with whoever is in government to make political uh, the best political opportunity for our members and that's what I'm going to do and and uh, so when the president does something we're going to disagree with we're going to speak out when Trudeau 
uh, speaks, uh, does things that we're in disagreement with, we'll speak out. And when they do things that we're in agreement with, we'll throw our shoulder behind it and we collaborate with other building trades unions and other unions to try and find that sweet spot that best represents and speaks for our workers. But it is unconventional right now. <laughs> but it's about jobs. That's my, a, a union represents workers. Right. We have collective bargaining relationships with our employers. We expect government to invest and foster jobs. Our polls, historically, now I go, I'm going back four presidential elections, mm -hmm. jobs in the economy are the number one and two issue. They have been and they continue to be. So everything that I harp on when I meet with a legislator, elected official, uh, at the state, national, federal, or provincial level, is about jobs in the economy because yeah. that's what benefits our members. That's what allows our employers. And you, you know, when you go into that austerity mode and there's no spending or no fostering of investment, it impacts our members' ability to get good paying wages and jobs under their collective bargaining. Basic household economics. So if you're an iron worker sitting out there, uh, you know, been active in the union or not active in the union, getting getting the work done every day. What does state politics look like? You know, you said that that was really the focus of the organization. What does that look like from their perspective? Or what wouldn't they see where the, the iron worker locals in that area are very active? In the U.S., we, we're seeing right to work get continually thrown up and promoted. And we're also seeing prevailing wage mm -hmm. or common wage, common construction wage laws targeted and organized labor and working families. And I just tell all our leaders and our members, we need to elect better people that represent our values, the workers, the constituents that live in those communities. So I'm never going to mandate something from Washington, D.C. We allow the local unions and the district councils to support candidates. And they end up uh, being on both sides of the aisle, and yeah. both in Canada and in the states. You know, they had to kind of referee between people who support different people, and I believe that that's their, their sure. right. Yeah. You know?